So this video will conclude Adolf Hitler's consolidation of power. And this is between the years 1933 and 1934. We see that in 1933, he was effectively in control, but he wasn't entirely in control, okay? There was still a little bit that was still... Um, someone could still overthrow him. And we... Um, in this video, we're going to look at how he deals with this. So a series of events lead to his consolidation of power. Okay, so the legal revolution is the term used to um, describe the Reichstag uh, fire decree and the enabling act, which gave more legality to Nazi actions. Okay, this was seen as the legal revolution. And between 33 and 34, Hitler was keen to appear moderate and emphasize national unity. So he wasn't he wasn't keen on an actual revolution. So uh, he wasn't wasn't keen on an actual revolution. Uh, there we go. Never spelling revolution correctly. <laughs> so Hitler was, uh, yeah, he was keen uh, to appear moderate. Okay, and a number of things did happen that uh, would uh, go against this, but in general, he was wanting to uh, appear uh, that he took control legally. Okay, so the Nazis uh, wanted to deal with those who were considered anti Nazi. So regional parliaments were dissolved, okay, and Reich governors took over. Okay, so we have, we start to see the. Dis dissolution of of different areas of government in 1933 in april 1933 so a month after the enabling act the law for the restoration of professional civil service was passed which removed jews and political opponents from the civil service schools and courts okay and in May 1933, trade unions were officially abolished. So this whole idea of appealing to workers, uh, appealing to workers, I'm spelling words wrong today, appealing to workers went down the pan effectively because the, uh, you know, appealing to uh, giving workers their rights suggests that they would want trade unions, but they got rid of trade unions, okay? Uh, the Nazi-controlled labor front now represented workers. So rather than having no trade unions at all, they appealed to workers by using what they called the labor front, which was now a representation of workers. And we'll talk about the strength through joy and the uh, labor front in a later video in a couple of weeks. But for now, this is what happened. In May 1933, the same month, Nazis occupied offices in the SPD and the KPD. So they had their chance to take over, but they lost it when Hitler passed the Enabling Act. And around 150,000 political opponents were arrested and placed into these new concentration camps. Now, we're going to go into it in a lot more detail in a later video as well. But what we need to have, what needs to be said here is concentration camps were not the same thing as death camps. So a concentration camp, uh, as the uh, phrase as the phrase suggests, is just a concentration of people, and so this was very different to Auschwitz and Treblinka and uh, Sobibor, for example. That these those were known as death camps, and they were set up in Eastern. Europe during the Second World War. So we'll talk about the development of them in a later video, but for now political prisoners and political opponents were put in these concentration camps, as in taking out of uh, the, the view of the public. Okay, That's not to say that the conditions in concentration camps were, were, were any good, it's to say that they weren't, the purpose of them wasn't to execute mass thousands of people. Okay, so these things being um, there were 
with these things being said, Hitler actually had a problem with his consolidation of power. So Hitler himself was not entirely in control. Because don't forget, Hindenburg was still president. He could have removed Hitler even now whenever he wanted. And especially when the army still remained loyal to the president and were outside of Nazi control. So at any point right now, Hitler could have been, and the Nazi party could have been removed from office with the help of with the help of the army and a and elections more elections could have been called bringing back the SPD and other more moderate parties this could have happened very easily but hindenburg chose not to uh, the SA were seen as a potential threat to Hitler's plans. So the SA, as you remember, were the the Nazi stormtroopers. Okay, so the the stormtroopers. Um, and at this point, there were around three million uh, members of the SA. So three million uh, members, and its leader was Ernst Krom who was that he was the leader of the SA at the SA and decided that he wanted the revolution to go further he didn't believe it went far enough and Hitler wanted to try and control him and keep him outside of this also the the Nazi stormtroopers pr proved to be almost a threat to the army because they were the Hitler's own private army almost so Hitler didn't want the army to get so annoyed that they remove him from office and because of the uh, the plans of these Nazi stormtroopers. For this reason, we have what became known as the Night of the Long Knives or Operation Hummingbird. Okay, So, SA leader Ernst Rom was openly critical of the Nazi actions. Rom wanted to merge the SA with the army, something that Hitler didn't want to do Okay, because he feared that this would... Uh, turn the army against him so he fears this uh, this would turn the army against him against him okay so we have that problem there so Hitler feared that Rom was gonna was gonna strike against him, and because the SA was so huge, he 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 was he it could have happened, and he could have actually taken Hitler down. Hitler was actually very vulnerable at this point in time. So Hitler feared Rom was gonna take over, and so he attacked first. On the night of the thirtieth of June and the first of July, in the early hours, Hitler and the SS. Uh, decided to purge the leaders of the SA and other political opponents okay so the SA was stripped apart and some 200 people were murdered and political opponents one of these was Ernst Rom who was told to he was arrested and he uh, was given a gun to kill himself. So we say murdered, he killed himself, but it was effectively murder. Another was Gregor Strasser. Okay, and the final one of significance here was the former Chancellor Kurt von Schleicher, who was uh, very high up in the army. And so this was um, this was seen as a as a purging of the 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 intimidation of the SA. So Hitler sold it and admitted this that this had happened straight away to Hindenburg and to the public. But Hindenburg and the army supported this move. Don't forget that the army was very critical of the SA. So the army the army didn't like the SA. Didn't like the SA or the SA. Okay? So when Hitler had told them that the SA had been removed and had have gone, then the army supported this. And so the final thing that, that allowed Hitler to gain uh, complete control of all of, uh, of Germany was something that was completely out of his hands. This was the sort of last thing that he decided to do himself, the Night of the Long Knives. And the final thing that happened was the death of Hindenburg, which happened in... August of 1934 so a month later Hindenburg had died okay and 
Within just a few hours of Hindenburg's death, Hitler merged the offices of Chancellor and President together and the army became loyal to him. And so therefore, he officially became the Führer. So, he became Führer of Germany. He had um, army support, he had the SS, and he had the support of the government. And he became the uh, the top of uh, the government within Nazi Germany. He became dictator in this one move. So finally, we are into Nazi Germany. We have discussed the collapse of uh, the Weimar state. The Weimar state is now gone, and now Nazi Germany has uh, prevailed.